Are you ready for our next speaker? Jonathan Fields is a New York City dad, husband, serial entrepreneur, sought-after teacher, and award-winning author. He does a lot of stuff. He's been featured widely in the media and is the founder of the mission-driven media venture known as Good Life Project. That's where he produces and hosts one of the top podcasts in the world with a tremendous global audience. His most recent book, How to Live a Good Life, became an instant bestseller. Here he is today in real life to inspire possibility in all of us. Please join me in welcoming Jonathan Fields. So there's this moment before everyone arrives, you're backstage, you're running through ideas and stories and dropping into that magical hyper-present space of pure possibility. And it takes me back to my days as a club DJ. The crowd is building outside. The doors are about to open. You can just feel the electricity building. And you have got one single job, to create a moment of collective elevation, to bring people into an experience that inspires possibility and leaves them changed. That sense of responsibility, that gift to create that moment, to allow people to step out of the everyday reality and into a moment of transcendent connection, inspiration, and possibility. That is what I try to bring every time I step onto the stage. So I want to take you a step back in time with me. I'm a recovering lawyer, <laughs> right? couple of raised hands I just saw over there. And I was recently out of my career. So I'm thinking to myself, well, I, I need to do the next logical thing, which of course is to open a yoga studio. <laughs> so I'm walking, looking for location in my neighborhood, and I see beautiful picture window, for rent sign. It's like three blocks from where I live. I go running back home. I pick up the phone, get on the phone with the broker. I go back over the next day. Me, we go up the stairs. He opens the door. I peek my head in. It's a floor in a building, a 115-year-old building. And I'm looking left and I'm looking right. And it's, it's decorated in a style I would probably affectionately call um, crack den chic. It's perfect for a yoga studio. So I go running back home, I tell my wife, she comes and sees it. A couple of days later, I find myself at the top of a tower, signing a six-year lease for a floor in a building. I'm married, I have a three-month-old baby, and a new home. This is exciting, terrifying and exciting. The city, by the way, is New York. The date is September 10th. 2001. So I wake up the next morning and my city is in flames. And my mind goes immediately to where everybody else who lived in New York went, which is who did I lose? And then the second thing is once I realized that nobody got out without losing somebody in the city that day, what have I done? Starting a business under the best of circumstances is filled with uncertainty, with mystery. We don't know how it's going to end. But starting it in this sea of pain, we didn't know what was coming next. We didn't know if this was the first of many. We didn't know on any given day what was going to happen. And I struggled with this, but I decided eventually to move forward because we were about to create a company that would serve a community of healing at a time in New York when it was never more needed. Well, I spent the last couple of decades kind of deep diving into story as a mechanism to not just deliver ideas, but to open minds, to open hearts, and to move people to action. So when I take the stage, whether it's a boardroom or a conference hall, I draw deeply upon the power of story to evoke emotion, to inspire possibility, and to open the door to wisdom. A little while back, I had a chance to sit down with um, the author, Elizabeth Gilbert. And uh, we were recording uh, an interview, actually. And we sat in the studio for about an hour. And it was magical. I was like, oh my God, can I just be in a room with you every day? <laughs> Something happened. And I felt that same energy with other people. Brene Brown is one of them. There's something magical. 
there's a joyfulness. There's an unapologetic joyfulness and lightness. There's a radiance that happens. And I think to myself, why can't we all be that way? Why can't we all be so just unapologetically joyful, so light? Why can't we just let the light come out like that? And what I realized is you cannot be unapologetically joyful until you are unapologetically you. Yeah. And that's where Liz was. And that's where Brene was. And that's where so many other people, where we see them as luminaries in the world, as people who are bringing light, where we try and we're like, oh my gosh, I want to be in their presence. What's really going on is they are aligning their actions with their essence and they've dropped the facade. They're no longer carrying the weight of being somebody else. They're just letting it all out. And that is so rare that when we experience it, we cannot get enough of it. Have you guys felt that? Yeah, it's intoxicating. And it's trainable. You can stand in that place yourselves. Fane basketball coach Jim Valvano shared that a full day is one where you laugh, where you think, and where your emotions move you to tears. And if you think about it, a powerful talk, it does the exact same thing. It's not just about information or even entertainment. It's about evoking something deeper than leaving people changed. And you begin to interact with people and with your world from this place you begin to experience life on the level of exquisite interactions, engagements, relationships. That gives you a depth of color and flavor and engagement and depth of relationships and love and joy and vulnerability and truth that goes into your creative process, weaves through it to create a narrative, to create the voice, to create all these other things that when you sit there and you listen to the podcast or you watch the video or you listen to the song or you crack open the book and you read and you start to cry. Yes, part of it is about craft and story and music and architecture and all these other things. But the deeper part, the part that is game changing, it's the input side of the equation. It's your willingness to cultivate the abilities and the skills, the depth of presence, to allow your interactions and relationships and experiences to become exquisite. And in so doing, you gain the ability to raise the bar of your creative output, to create exquisite experiences, and maybe just an exquisite life along with it. Thank you.